Finally, China can buy the best Nvidia chips. Three days after China's Nvidia went public, U.S. suddenly gave Nvidia the green light to sell its H200 chips to China. The U.S. opens the chip door, but the question is, does China even want it? Be on December 8th, Trump posted on social media saying the United States will allow NVIDIA to sell its H200 products to approve the customers in China, but only under some pretty tough conditions. Condition 1, only approved customer in China can buy them. Condition 2, the U.S. government takes 25% of the sales. And Condition 3, America keeps the right to pull the plug anytime for national security. Now here's the wild part. This permission can write as two major Chinese GPU companies hit the market. On December 5th, more threats, people call it China's NVIDIA, listed on the Asia market. It was founded by former NVIDIA China executive Zhang Zhenzhong, was once put on a US blacklist. And still its stock jumped 425% on day one. On the same day, another Chinese GPU company Muxi opened its IPO. The winning rate? Basically impossible to get. But here's the bigger picture. The White House just released its new 2025 national security strategy. In America's new strategy, China is labeled the top economic competitor. And part of goal is to stop China from moving up the tech value chain. So when the US suddenly lets the H200 in, people can't help asking, is this really about business? China is the world's biggest semiconductor market, and skipping it is like cutting off your own arm. Is this a strategic move? Let the US old champion back in China, right when local GPU companies are still young, to slow them down, take back market share, and make China catch up harder. So the big questions now are, can the H200 really pull this off? And what happens next for China's homegrown GPU industry? Just yesterday, China cannot buy the best U.S. chips, not the second best U.S. chips, not the third best chips, only the fourth best chips. All China can say is, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. Forget about chips, the real battle is actually brain power. The China-US AI talent race is heating up. In just one year, China pumped out more than 3.5 million STEM graduates, and the US only 820,000. That's more than four times the American pipeline of engineers and scientists. China's college system exploded in just one generation. Higher education grads are up ninefold, and the share of adults with a master's degree has went from 0.1% to 0.9% in just 20 years. On the other hand, the U.S. started way higher and still leads in advanced degree overall, moving from 8.7% to 14.1%. And when it comes to breakthrough models, the U.S. is still a benchmark. OpenAI kicks off the generative AI wave, and players like Grox and Google's Gemini are still setting global standards. On the other hand, China is getting more out of less. One Chinese model, DeepSeek, claims to rival OpenAI at just a fraction of the cost. Chinese internet giants spent around $56 billion this year. That's only one-tenth of US peers and still hitting comparable model performance. China also has a massive data advantage. Short video apps give its company a mountain of training content and outside of the two Google systems, the rest of the world's top 15 image-to-video models are all from Chinese firms. On the innovation side, Chinese companies posted the fastest growth in U.S. patent grant last year. Huawei alone made a record $630 million from patent licensing and is teaming up with universities on AI research and training. A leading chip world historian says AI power really comes down to three things. One, computing power. Two, brain power. And three, electrical power. He argues that the U.S. still has a big lead in compute, while China leads in electrical power, the energy that actually run all of these AI. One investor even said, before we run out of GPUs, we're going to run out of energy. And in energy, a lot of analysts say China has the upper hand. So what is the reality? It's not a simple U.S. win, China loses story. China is catching up fast in talent, data, patents, and energy. Will the U.S. still dominates frontier models, top ecosystem, and attracts global founders, including many also from China? So who do you think is actually ahead in AI? The U.S. or the China? Or are there also possibility that it's actually closer than we think? Tell me in the comments. So Trump says NVIDIA now can ship its H200 AI chips to approved customers in China as long as 25% of the revenue goes to the U.S. government. Honestly, good news for China. And good news for the U.S. government too. 25% of the sales 
by the way, not profit. It's not a tax. It's not a fee. At this point, the U.S. government is basically a reseller. But please, can we stop pretending the U.S. is a free market capitalism? What do you think? Small move, money grab, or a government-sponsored side hustle? Do you want to know the definition of winning the AI race? Whichever nation, country, or the whole world is able to figure out a way where every citizen does not need to be a slave anymore, that is when we win the AI race. According to this article, the Chinese AI principles are more popular in global south. Not just because it's open source, but also because it tried to solve a practical problem, whether in transportation or agriculture. So the U.S. approach is come up with a general, powerful model, like artificial generative intelligence (AGI). So the Chinese model is more like. Improve a specific area's productivity, artificial productivity intelligence. For example,、uh, a farmer could be using drones to survey、um, its land, and the drone can take thousands of pictures in real time, and the AI model can analyze those patterns and decide which area to put more fertilizer or put more. Pesticides, so that kind of pragmatic solution, but focus on specific problem. So, which ones you think is better? The U.S. is already falling behind China in the AI energy race, yet nobody is talking about it. Last year, China generated twice the electricity the U.S. did, and because of the huge supply, some Chinese data centers pay actually less than half of U.S. power prices. Yes, you hear it right, only half. And China is even still building. They are investing 560 billion dollars into their power grid by 2030, and could have 400 gigawatts of extra electricity. So, what does that mean? It's like Having the entire power output of multiple countries combined and just sitting spare. A big piece is China's East Data West Computing Plan. That means moving data centers to China's cheap power regions like Inner Mongolia, which is a huge desert over there. So think of it like dropping a mini Silicon Valley in the desert, where there are a bunch of sunlight and the cost of solar power is way lower. Meanwhile, in the U.S., analysts warned that they could hit a major electricity shortage in just three years unless the grid gets updated fast. U.S. AI companies are literally telling the government, "We're running out of power. Fix this." And then there's Deep Six R1 model proving that you don't always need the best chips if you can run them cheaply and efficiently. So the new question isn't about who has the most GPUs; it's actually who has enough electricity to power the future of AI. What do you think? Tell us your thoughts below. Whoever wins the AI race is the nation that is able to free its citizen. And that's what makes more threats important. It's not just a hot stock; it is an industrial policy in shape form. China has made semiconductor self-sufficiency a national goal, pouring money into factories, equipment, and domestic chip designers. The goal is that by 2027, core systems in finance, telecom, and energy are supposed to run 70% to 100% on domestic tech. That implies hundreds of billions of dollars in chip orders. More threats is one. One of the firms that meant to fill that gap. It was founded in 2020 by James Strong, a classic global tech insider. He worked at HP and Dell before and joined Nvidia in 2005. He spent about 14 years there, became vice president and head of Nvidia China. Then he quit and he created more threat. That resume helped the company poach talents from Nvidia and AMD and attract money from dozens of VCs and private equity funds before the IPO. This Chinese startup could become Nvidia's biggest competitor, and its founder used to be Nvidia's senior executive. This is more threats China's rising GPU superstar. On its first trading day, the company's stock surged more than 400 percent. That is the wildest debut in China's tech history. And behind this company is Zhang Jianzhong, also known as James Zhang. He spent more than a decade at Nvidia and used to serve as the China general manager at the company. So, in other words, the man who helped grow Nvidia in China is now building a company that could become a threat. 
In 2020, Zhang left NVIDIA to start more threads. His goal was bold, create a fully homegrown GPU that can power AI training, gaming, cloud computing, and everything. The company built its own architecture from scratch and developed GPUs for both graphics and AI workflows. As China pushes for tech self-reliance, more threads became a symbol of China's NVIDIA. Investors rushed in. Analysts say the company could reshape China's entire AI hardware ecosystem. From NVIDIA's insider to NVIDIA's challenger, Zhang Jianzhong and more threads story is just getting started. Who do you think will win the GPU race?